Okay, I'm going to try to make a video that kind of gives in a little more detail on what to look out for as far as 1-3 is involved. It'll be kind of a frustrating battle, uh, but I think there's a few things that can make it quite a bit easier. Um, I will probably make a different video showing um, literally every option, but uh, due to it being a really hard thing to just wait on, um, forcing it, it would take hours, um, that'll be a video that I make probably at a later time. The real important issue that most people want to know about is just the top right section of the game where the final turn that gets you into the castle, because at the end of the day, Max is generally going to be level 3 here, attacking a rune knight to hit level 4, gaining speed at level 4, and then using that speed to outturn the rune knights on the following turn. So what I mean by that is everyone has to go in a turn, Max being at 6 speed puts him quite, quite slow. Um, we got Mei and Tao at 7 speed, Bats at 9, Max and Rune Knights at 6, and Dark Dwarves at 5. So, if turn order is actually going off of those speed values, you can kind of have an idea on what turn order is going to look like. Um, you should always expect, once you see like a bunch of Dark Dwarves going, followed by Bats, then you know the turn has started. So it is always important to keep an eye on where turn order is at, at least uh, for the majority of times. Um, for the sake of this, I'm just going to have um, Pao and Mei only here. Most people have a fourth character like Luke, Ken, or Hans. And um, they are generally just killing bats while Max is doing his sneak strat to the, uh, to the castle. Um, ideally, uh, for turn one, the only thing that really kind of matters is Max has kind of three specific moves. One is to move left to the bridge, and then it is moving either above uh, the Dark Dwarf that should have came down. Uh, it appeared that the Dark Dwarf had outturned Max on turn one, but normally this Dark Dwarf comes down. In this case, it's, it's not really going to make much of a difference here. Um, it's like, or you go to the right of it, and ideally in this case you'd be going to the right of it. What this ends up doing is just the Dark Dwarves on the left um, won't come down because Max is too far away. They'll just stay, which is one, just another turn where moving isn't happening, saves a little bit of time, nothing too crazy. Um, but also there's no way Max can get fully surrounded by enemies um, when in the spot. Um, so it makes things kind of nice. Ideally, we're trying to take as few hits as possible. And that can be kind of uh, easy to manipulate to make sure things go in your favor. You don't really want to get hit too much down here, and you definitely don't want Dark Wars following you up on the top side once we get to this tree line, which is where we will want to be sitting. Um, in order to be in position to attack Rune Knights. Um, so from here, I'm just going to be killing bats as fast as I can, um, just to move on. Uh, Max's next move then needs to be above or to the right of this tree, which is pretty easy. You're just going from, uh, you know, Dark Dwarf location to tree location. Um, Ideally, this is always going to be to the right of the tree. Um, just know that in a case like this where Max hasn't triggered the Dark Orbs on the right, um, you can trigger all three of these by being above the tree um, instead of being to the right where you'd only get two out of the three here. Um, the reason why that kind of matters is because, again, once enemies start getting a little too far away, meaning being the Dark Orbs, um, they will want to either stop moving or go for somebody else. So in the case of um, Tao here, getting one space upwards gets her closer to the Dark Dwarf and that'll actually bring a Dark Dwarf down, which can be a good thing if you're looking to try to get Tao um, to level 4 because it's just an extra more experience. Not usually something that I go for or need, but it is there as an option, otherwise you would just keep Tao on the low side. Everyone's gonna die down here, it don't matter. <clears throat> that's just unlucky, and that's why a fourth member is kind of nice. Bats are always a pain. 
You don't really want to deal with them. Um, anyway. Um, now, Max is getting outturned by Dark Dwarves, which is a shame. But that's also why we'll have Medical Herbs. Usually we buy healing before this battle, or pick some up. Usually you should have a couple. Um, a couple herbs of some kind, just to make it easier on yourself. We're gonna kind of skip through a little bit of this. Hmm. <clears throat> Now, there's one thing that's slightly problematic. And that is that I... For the turn of actually <laughs> going up to Rude Knights, um, it is probably smarter to actually watch the entirety of the turn. But, um, there's really not a huge reason to, because the turn did just start. We saw bats finally go, and two Rude Knights have gone, being, I guess, technically top left and top right. <clears throat> and we're getting outturned by Dark Dwarves again, which is not necessarily a bad thing. And now from this location, or even to the space of the left, you could reach up to this uh, Rude Knight, but there um, is just one kind of golden rule um, as far as attacking this Rude Knight on the left. Um, and that's pretty much that either five, all five Rude Knights have gone before you go and attack this Rude Knight, or four have gone with the only ones that haven't gone being acceptable are really the ones on the right or the one that can attack max i suppose as well but um because enemies for some reason don't want to go on a 30 percentile these enemies will not actually move down into the left um onto this tree um they will actually move um around the tree after going down and then go below max uh, this doesn't work with the top two enemies, though, as them just moving down puts them in the tree anyway, so. If we were to get, like, all four of them except this top corner on the right, uh, that would be more than fine to go. Um, but, again, that's usually doesn't happen too often and is pretty much the only time that that'll happen. It's like, only one of these two is allowed to attack you on this turn if you were uh, to get the turn order to go to attack. The Rune Knight on the far left. As far as the far right goes, because now when we don't get it, because we only got two out of the five, um, which is all you need to know to not be able to go there, then you're just moving to the corner. <clears throat> and from here, it's kind of nice because now we can watch turn order as bats go, we get four Rune Knights to go um, before Max finally goes. Um, so from here, we know that once we move here, only one Rune Knight is going to attack us and we would be just fine. Um, more than likely. Uh, if you are level 3 and hitting level 4 on this attack on a Rune Knight, you should be fine like 60% of the time because all you need is one speed to tie the Rune Knight's agility, which isn't ever going to be anywhere close to a guarantee, but it does give you like a 51% chance to outturn a singular rune knight. So you're kind of needing to flip quite a bit of heads with coin flips. Um, that's why generally the golden rule, at least for any time you're attacking rune knights, is just to save before doing so. <clears throat> that is literally the only thing you have to do, and the rest is pretty free. Um, I'll make a save state just in the case of when we get to this, but now we need to talk about um, the things to look out for, at least one in the right corner, and attacking the Rune Knight on the right, because there's a few more things to look out for, and a lot more that can happen, but really you only need to pay attention to two Rune Knights, and those are the ones that can possibly um, actually block the right side of Max, because as soon as the right side of Max is blocked, you're losing 90 some percent of the time. Um, and the only two Rune Knights that can even do that are the top right Rune Knight and the top Rune Knight. Um, the top right Rune Knight will always go there, and the top Rune Knight has a if and clause, I guess. If or. Um, where it's like. This Rune Knight will attack the left side of Max if 
it isn't already blocked by one of the other rune knights that could possibly have attacked Max's left side as well, because if that does happen, um, then it will loop around and go attack Max's right side. So, with that knowledge alone, you could literally get two out of three enemies just being the top right and top rune knight, and you're always good to go. You can theoretically have just only the top right rune knight go and still be able to go. But again, because of that little clause, you would only have like a 33% chance of making that actually work because this top right one would have to outturn the other two, which is very unlikely, so you, you shouldn't go on that. But you could! That just pretty much emphasizes the importance of this top right rune knight. Where it's like, once you see the top right rune knight go, you're almost always going to be fine, but then again, you do need to pay attention to your HP, because if you were in a situation like this where I only had one healing item and didn't heal and was at 8 HP, I'd be dead in two attacks. So me going in a situation up here when either one or even two rune knights had gone, like the two good rune knights to go, I would still die here because getting attacked by three rune knights is easily going to kill me. And ideally you don't want to be taking three rune knight hits either way um, because one one critter double and you're dead and second you do need to out turn excuse me out turn all five of them the turn after we're going completely last on this turn uh, besides the one uh, rune knight on the bottom left here so obviously this would be completely free for the most part um, level four you're always getting speed one two or three speed one this is probably like a good showing of just being pretty much dead um, I actually value speed 3 so much that I used to sometimes um, force my save to give me a, um, a speed 3 um, because it's just like then you kind of just know that your, your chances of outturning everything is like 90% like 80 some percent it's a really high high chance um, and getting through ends up being a heck of a lot easier but still that doesn't mean you're guaranteed anything um, so that's why the save is absolutely needed and that is the only thing that really matters now we get speed three um, we can see if there's a difference assuming that I even survive um, and get past um, I always survive that crit this time around how funny um, the other thing to note is a lot of people do accidentally get in here with a level four max already yeah. So Dark Wars went, followed by Max. We even outturned all three bats. We literally just went completely first. Um, and therefore we'd be able to get into the castle. Um, if you were to be level 4 already, um, the same strat will pretty much apply. You would do the exact same thing. It's just paying attention to turn order becomes a lot more difficult. Um, because once you are, um, like, at the same speed, which should be 9, being the same speed as bats is, is kind of hard to look at, because you're normally looking um, at the bats when wanting to see when turn order is starting, but this is why I brought up the speed of the Dark Wars, because they always kind of go in a line. If they're going last, bats are going first, then you'll see Dark Wars go, and then bats go. But if we have this amount of speed and we're literally tied with the bats, then we should theoretically outturn bats the majority of turns. So a lot of people will see dark wolves go, dark wolves go, and then max, and think max got outturned by all the dark wolves when in reality you're going completely first. Uh, so again, it's almost more important to be paying attention to the, when the dark wolves are going and understanding that that's the end of the turn, rather than looking at the bats and thinking that that's the start of the turn. Um, especially with there being just way more Dark Wars anyway. Um, but, at least when understanding... Um, understanding and actually like reading the turn order and actually paying attention to it, then um, the fight should generally be pretty easy. Um, there's one other exception to, um, being blocked on the right side and still being able to go, um, and that would be if all, um, four rune knights except the top right rune knight had gone, um, which would still technically be acceptable, 
Um, that one would end up blocking your right side, but all the other ones would have gone, and so technically your left side would be open. And you do actually have enough room to go left, up, and around. Um, if you outturn everything yet again. But still, definitely something you could definitely save for. Um, but as far as taking any gambles, um, especially with this uh, with this top knight, um, don't I just don't ever gamble, assuming that he's going to outturn anybody. Just assume that he is going to probably block your right side as well. Um, but once you just notice that like three, four, or five rune knights are going, you're generally always going to be fine. It just has to be the correct ones and it does take a little bit of paying attention to but obviously the one in front of max has really no threat um the one on the bottom left is always going to attack his left side or bottom side and the top left will pretty much do the same um there's just some times where actually like all of max's spots are kind of occupied on the left side and he'll actually kind of stay put um He'll just move over a couple spaces instead. You'll see that from time to time. Not really a big issue. Um, having additional members in here to kill rune knights can actually be a bad thing. Um, idea, ideally, it's a good idea. Um, as far as safety goes, you can have extra blockers. Um, again, like on the left side of Max, um, where Max can get up to this rune knight and someone blocking these rune knights. Um, then it becomes maybe a little safer. Um, but definitely not something that should be needed. Um, it just takes patience. You gotta wait. Um, sometimes it takes five turns. If you're already level four going into this, I... It can take 15, 20 turns. <laughs> like, it, can, it takes a while if you're level four. It's usually not fun, but you just gotta, gotta be patient. Um, I will make a, an additional video regardless, because this got kind of long. Um, that's a little more condensed and hopefully will be more of a diagram, um, of pictures and VODs of all the things that I pretty much explained, but just show them actually happening. Um, they're just kind of hard to force right now, so I will, uh, leave it at that. But yeah, just pay attention to specific rune knights, uh, be patient, and make sure to make that safe, and you'll be just fine.